sure as this match unfolds, Phil, we will be discussing Christina's unique queuing. Yeah, we picked it up last night, didn't we, when we saw a few racks of her victory over Kevin Gumond on table two. She beat Kevin 9-5. What she tends to do is address the ball, have a couple Push of waggles call. with the cue, and then all of a sudden seems to freeze on the shot for what seems like an eternity. I think you counted five seconds, didn't you, Carl, at one point? Yeah, I'll be doing some more counting as well. I want to really get involved with this cue action. So, of course, she's hooked behind the two after the break shot. The Kelly options. next shot at the table can always play a push out. You die-hard pool fans will know that, but if you're new to the sport, that is a rule you must know. And as I always say in these circumstances, Carl, and it definitely holds true, the push out is almost a game within a game. Not particularly technical or demanding in terms of the execution of the shot but the thought behind it that's the that's the big thing yeah it took me 20 minutes to explain to Judd when I spent the day with him <laughs> he couldn't quite get his head around it but we, we soon got there and very hard to teach the push out to somebody because each individual player has strengths and weaknesses and there's a lot of mind games in the push out it's not something you can just learn in a day, that's for sure, as we're going to see Kelly maybe get the short stick out here, Phil, and go airborne. Well, that is a, a very timely jump shot here, because thinking about Judd Trump, if you break off and don't have a shot and you want to push out, why not push to a jump against Judd? Because he's not used to playing the jump shots. In fact, I don't think he's got it in the armoury. Kelly Fisher does, but there was no real control there. The cue ball was flying up the table a little bit too fast. And she kind of got away with that one. What a story these two had getting here. So the WPBA event was played in Fairfield, Iowa, which is in the Midwest of America. It finished on Sunday. They had a two-hour drive to Des Moines Airport. Got a plane to Chicago. Laid over there. Then, on Monday morning, flew from Chicago to Philadelphia. Made the drive here. They arrived around 3 o'clock in the afternoon and had to play just a few hours later. All for a game of pool, Phil. <coughs> Yeah, and what was remarkable, both won. We've talked about Christina Takachi's win over Kevin Gamon, 9-5. Kelly Fisher came through even more convincingly, 9-3 over Leo Ott. Yeah, so the safety shot from Kelly Fisher has gone wrong. This gives Christina, and it's an easy pop. And the two ball, oh, it's gone wrong. She was trying to hold position to play the two onto the purple five so it's a nervy shot from Christina I'm sure she's thinking about her recent loss to Kelly Fisher in the WPBA event there's that exaggerated pause yeah the defeat in Iowa really strung Christina because it was a double elimination like this and she'd beaten Kelly 8-6 to get to the final but then Fisher rebounded on the one loss side overcoming April Larson that set up the rematch and in the final itself Kelly prevailed 10-1 hardly making a single mistake everything she touched according to Christina turned to gold Kelly was having none of that she didn't want to go for the pot, I believe there was no position for the three. And where the purple five is, it looks a little bit awkward for a plant, a combination. So we'll see how that plays out. 
And these type of racks that we're seeing now, just going back to Judd Trump who played before the ladies, these are where when he comes up against a proper pool player, this is where I think we're going to see Judd maybe struggle. It's going to be compelling viewing as Kelly gets the jump cue out again. I'm sure these ladies have played many matches and beat each other many times. They both will know how important the start is. Kelly's going to try and pop the purple five over the corner. Just didn't hit the blue too thin enough. Where's it going to finish? It's not too bad. Christina's got a nice little shot here. Can she cue down on the cue ball? And get that cue ball in behind that red three. Just depends where the two goes. She doesn't want to be in the jaw in the middle. Yep, job well done. Kelly's in trouble. She won't be jumping this one, Phil. That cue ball is too close to the red three. What a career she's had in two sports. Women's World Snooker Champion and indeed Women's World English Billiards Champion. Then she came over to the States. Now, was that illegal contact? Marcel Eckhart was there. No foul called. I'll tell you what, that was close. Yeah, it looked good at first glance to me, my young guys, Phil. Obviously, you're knocking on a bit, Phil, so we'll let you off with that one. Yeah, your younger eyes. Well, she's actually got away with it, and now Christina's going for the jump cue. It's the first rack, and it's all happening. Yeah, what's happening here is both players, when they... The hook saves and the jump shots, they're both getting away with it at the minute. No one's leaving a, a real easy chance. It's fair to say Christina has had the easiest, easiest chance so far. As we see another safety, trying to use the eight ball. And I don't think that's too bad. Christina's going to be kicking off the side rail. And it's a big ball. There is a chance she could pop this in that bottom right pocket. It was a close one. You could see it went very near the pocket and well, she got away with another one. We have a saying in pool, it pays to hit. That means when your opponent's got you in a hook safe, rule number one is just hit the ball. And that's what Christina did. This is a cheeky little shot she's attempting. It was never easy. The, the point of that pocket was always going to come into play a little bit. I don't think she's left the pointing angle, though. Worth it a little bit, but Extension, that's please. not really the problem. The problem here is if she does swerve it and pop the two, cue ball's gonna flirt over towards that nine ball, and that's no good for the three. So, a little bit of a problem here. She played it with extreme left-hand English spin. And that turns the two ball over towards the pocket. So she cheated it a little bit. And this was always going to be the key ball in the rack. So she needs to play a good safety here.
can tell you about table two when we were over there for a brief glimpse of the action we saw Shane van Boning just narrowly failed to complete a combination shot to go 2-0 ahead well now SVB and Sharik Saeed a lot together at two racks each interesting stuff in the early going there the arena Kelly Fish has got ball in hand and all the balls are sat real pretty so it looks like she's going to steal this first round both players have had chances yeah went back to her chair there get the necessary equipment all the time the the clock was running low in the end the beep started and it really got under her skin she rushed the shot and that should lead to loss of rack Really is a wonderful atmosphere in here on day two. 33 tables in action. And this is where the event really starts to unfold. Players are starting to go in the one loss side. It's all about making it to that final 16 single elimination. Every single match in the last 16 will be played in the arena. And we'll do a race to 11. That is the goal the first half of this tournament. Yeah, Kelly for sure. It was quite a, a drawn-out rack, lots of twists and turns, an awful lot of jump shots. In the end, it was the cue ball on the carpet that cost Christina to catch. Kelly Fisher wins the opener. I can tell you, a really good player from the Philippines, Warren Kianko, has just completed a victory over Justin Espinosa from right here in the good old USA, 9-7. Moritz Neuhauser from Germany, really highly thought of a junior player. He's won 9-7 against Anthony Meglino, still out there. Niels Feyen battling away against Kenshiro Saki from Japan. Feyen leading 7-5. Radoslav Babica, a veteran player from Poland who has produced some really good results on the international stage over the years. He's 8-7 down to Jason Theron from break, South Africa and Blaine Barkas from the USA. He's 8-6 up on Masato Yoshioka, who represented Japan in this year's World Cup. Well, it's going to be a dry break, not the best of splits. I think Marcel well, was not wrapped them balls too good. He needs to take a bit more care. Even though we're using the template, there's still a certain way you should be racking the balls on the template to make sure they're all touching. And as long as the referee does that, the one ball should fly in that corner pocket. I read something about Christina to catch this afternoon when I was doing research for the match. She's 22 years of age now but she's been playing competitively for more than half a life. How about this, call? When she was nine, she placed third in the Russian Under-18 Championship at the age of nine. Yeah, that's incredible. So she's no stranger to the big match. And she's involved in the big match here. She's lost the cue ball there, though. Didn't pop the one ball clean. It went in a little too thin. And that's caused the cue ball Canada the green six. So she's gonna have to play safe here. Five time US Open champion. He's in action on table two. That can be watched on the Maximum Pool YouTube channel. Yeah, and Shane Van Boning has just taken a 3 2 lead. He's fully expected to pull away against his Singaporean opponent, but you never know. If 
you're unaware, next up on this table, it's another five-time US Open champion, the incomparable Earl Strickland. You've had a few run-ins with Earl over the years, Cole. Yeah, we have indeed. 60 years of age now is Earl Strickland. So that's going to be an interesting watch. And I'm glad they put that on the TV table, Phil, because we don't know how long Earl Strickland's going to be playing at a high level. And I'm sure the crowd will be jam-packed for Earl the Pearl. What he's achieved in the game, he fully deserves to be out there centre stage. I absolutely fully endorse that decision. We like to see the golden oldies, and we like to see good jump shots like that. That was a wonderful jump shot there from Quick Fire Fisher. Here we get another look, jumping over two balls. Purely the spin that took that ball in the pocket, because we've seen them hang up. 4.25 inches now. They're getting a little bit smaller, these pockets, as the years go by. And that was a shocker from Kevin. There's a little bit of noise coming from somewhere. I don't know if there's a match getting close or somebody's had a few too many bevies. Could be both. I thought he was going to say it could be you. It's definitely not me. I've been a good boy so far. Oh, it's definitely not me. Extension, please. Just feel like this is... It's an important rack for Christina, this, even though it's so early on in the match. It's a tough one, she's queuing off the rail. Beautiful camera angle, by the way. Well, the bigger the shot, it seems to me, the lengthier the pause over it. And I personally believe, and I don't know whether you agree, Carl, sometimes the pause is too lengthy. Yeah, I do agree. And you might have seen Christina tap the table with the cue. That's a pool player's way of saying sorry, but deep down she'll be sat in her chair. Glad it's gone there. Don't be fooled. Okay, he's got a work cut out here. It's not easy to hit this ball. Extension called. Yeah, what she's looking at here is going off three rails. And the reason she's not going off one rail straight into the threes because if you hit it that way, the percentage of getting it safe is a lot lower than going three because she comes off this third rail, so that's the rail where the green six is touching, and she hits it full. It could push Fall the three shot. towards the ball she's just hit. Kelly, a big jump there, you let me down. Start the clock, please. Well, I think the seven ball, the brown seven, has just been pushed onto the purple five. So that makes this finish a little bit more harder than it would have been. You just get the impression both players know that the start of this match is big, they can relax. And of course, it'll mean the winner of this match has won two matches. So she's purposely trying to leave an angle in this pink four so she can knock the five out. Maybe she was trying to land straight because maybe the purple five does go in the opposite side near the green six. Let's see what she's going to do here. She didn't really have the right angle, but she has dislodged it. She's going to have to play a good safe here. Yeah, it's a wonderful shot. Got a good five ball save and drawn the cue ball in behind the brown seven. Well, he's got a kick at this ball again. 
it's a really disjointed start to this match. The second rack going like the first. Scrappy. But this is vital. Kelly just make sure you hit the ball. It's very hard to get this save. She's going to be relying on luck. But if you miss the ball like that, Five shot. you get ball in hand up and the chances are she's going to lose this rack now. Because Christina can put that cue ball perfect where she wants to get position on the six. Another one of the ladies playing in this event, April Larson from USA. She's leading Stephen Folan from Canada 3-0, so that's a healthy start. Stephen's he's a talented player, so he's got his work cut out over there. Yeah, he beat Shane Van Boning a few years ago in the World 10 Ball Championship. He's a Brit, actually, born and raised in London. Moved out to Vancouver, British Columbia. Just over a decade ago, owns a, a really nice pool room out there in the city. And he's a real enthusiast. Niels Fyen is also playing in winners round one. He's actually leading that match. Eight racks to six, so he's broke a little lead, but it's been a tight match, that one. Mario, he's going undercover, Phil, isn't he? We've not really spoke about Mario. The Austrian, he's leading 8-6 as well. Christina Fikash. What's the second? No one's leading in this match. It is 1-1. To catch, equalises. Yeah, so much going on, isn't there? You're right about Mario, he. With his... Big occasion temperament. He's won the World Cup in partnership with Alban Auschen twice. You get the impression that he could go really deep. And what about this? Shane Van Boning. 4-3 up on Syed. And the Singaporean has got a really good chance to draw level by taking rack number eight. He's just played an absolute shocker there, though. He's hooked himself behind the nine but we could be seeing a little battle breaking out there. We'll keep you posted on that. You can, of course, watch that in the match room to a YouTube channel. I'm sure some of you are. SVB has a big fan base, five-time champion of this event. He's looking to break history and win it for a sixth time. The only other man to win it five times is the great Earl the Pearl Strickland. He's coming up on table one. Kelly and Christina can't wait. TV gold, Phil. It is indeed. Oh, but that wasn't gold. That was rust. What a gift. From having a golden chance, as I said, when we came to this table, it's now yeah. Van Boning who most surely Thank will you extend his advantage. The current score is one each. Christina Takash to break. We'll keep it split screen until SVB does go back to in front. One thing you have to say about Van Boning's achievement in winning his five US Opens, he did so in a nine-year spell. Whereas Earl Strickland did so in a 16-year spell. Yeah, I think what Shane did there is probably the greatest achievement in pool because you know you do need a little bit of lady look at times. But I played in most of them events that he won, and he just was blitzing the field year after year. It was it was awesome to watch. To be fair, what he's so good at is punishing their opponents when they make mistakes. He knows this is a big rack. a long way from Singapore to Atlantic City. 
and after playing that terrible positional shot and his subsequent failed escape out of the snooker it was a long walk back to his chair for Sharik Syed that could be really costly from there Van Berning could take a stranglehold so this is off the break shot Christina had a shot on the one ball and this is where she's at she's got this long red three into the top corner She would have liked the cue ball to run a little bit further. That would have made this next shot real obvious. But she should be okay. She shouldn't cause too many problems. Most matches we've seen so far, Phil on table one have been pretty quick, haven't they? Big score lines. This one was brewing up to be a lot closer, though. Yeah, you get that feeling, definitely. By the way, for fans of Niels Fine, of which there are many. Good news, he's beaten Kenshiro Saki from Japan 9-6, the multiple Moscone Cup MVP. Yeah, the US Open is pretty much the one title that has eluded Niels Fine. He's won most of the other events. He's not had much fun over the years at the US Open, so he'll be hoping it's his year. Christina needs three more balls to take the lead. Very good potter of the ball is Christina. She doesn't really miss many pots. That's definitely one of her strengths. Stays very still, just watch her head. No movement. That's always going to bode well. So this simple nine, it'll be 2-1. Fisher playing catch up against to catch because Christina has taken a 2 1 lead. Now let's go into the arena where Michael is going to give us some news. Yeah, don't worry, Carl, I'll, I'll do your job for you. Yeah, just behind me, Shane Van Boning is in front now 5 3 against Sherek Saheed, 5 3. Another table elsewhere, Justin Martin 8 all against BJ Usury, and I've heard it's getting pretty tasty. Wow, that's interesting. I was looking at some images on the internet this afternoon of BJ Usury playing in some tournament or other, where he was wearing headphones, rather akin to the size of the headphones that we're using at the moment. Don't know what that was all about. Getting a bit tasty. Does he mean there's a bit of aggro there? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but thanks to Michael for doing my job for a minute as I sit alongside punditry royalty that's you of course Phil thank you Paul Frank Christina Takashi is leading 2-1 and we're back even that suspended animation on the break off as though she's willing in the balls yeah, and this is going to work well. I thought it was going to work out OK. Just that last flick I means she's hooked on the one. The pool player's worst nightmare. You think you're going to have a shot, and then all of a sudden, that last ball comes and rolls, and you snook it. Christina's great moments was winning the 2017 World Pool Association World Junior Nine Ball Championship in her native Moscow. Well, she went for the jump and it really did not pay any dividend whatsoever yeah she could have played a push out elected to play all out attack it's down to personal preference
And now Kelly's got a chance to steal this rack and tie it up. You just, you just know this match is going to go. Nine, seven, nine, eight. We've not seen much of that yet. Oh, that is a mistake. If the three ball passes the eight, it might not be the end of the world, but she wanted the two to stay over the pocket. And there you see, doesn't. Big mistake from Kelly Fisher. While she contemplates two more results, BJ Usury has defeated Justin Martin at 9-8 in a real thriller. And for me, a shock. Alan Roland Rosado from Puerto Rico has beaten Thomas Kaplan from Poland, 9-7. Yeah, we haven't seen many shocks. There's only really Omar Al Shaheen, the world finalist from a, a few weeks ago, who's over in the, the losers section. So we will chalk that down as a little bit of a shock. But mark my words, tomorrow and the day after, there's going to be all kinds of champions Extension, and legends move over to the left side of the draw. So now Extension, there's only please. two matches in this round to be completed. Shane Van Burning's over on table two, and the one we're watching right now. Please put the extension, thanks. That's actually a really good shot because she didn't have a lot of room to land the cue ball on the table, so she's done well keeping both balls on the table, but she's left the pot for Kelly. We're seeing so many jump shots. Yeah, there's probably been about eight jump shots, and uh, I'm not sure if you know this, Phil, but a lot of the top professionals for years have always said they'd love a rule where you're only allowed to play one jump shot per match. Did you know that? I didn't know that, but I do now. Does it affect the table? Does it deteriorate the table? Not really. I mean, it's, you know, the, the players... I mean, it might do if you're playing the jump shot. You might rip the cloth, but, you know, at this level, they're, they're not going to be sending that cue through the table. But I think what it is is a lot of the top pool players like the art of the safety aspect and the kick-in and the clever kick shots. And in modern-day history... Q manufacturers have made the jump cue so easy the cue ball just flies up in the air and you're pretty much guaranteed a hit so the reason why we say Extension one jump piece. shot per match is because then you'd have to think about when you're going to play the jump shot and you could almost if I know my opponents played their one jump shot and I haven't I could push out into an easy jump and they've got a kick and things like that it would add a different element but maybe we'll leave that for another day well, so much thinking in nine-ball pool, that would create even more. By the way, you don't need to be a novice to rip the cloth playing a shot. It happened at the Crucible Theatre. And the miscreant was former champion there, Peter Ebden. They had to hastily recover the table. Well, I never knew that. She's kicking off the back rail. She's played it wonderful. She'd love this to slope a little bit. She's got to be happy with that. That was all about the cue ball. That was purposely played. Not so sure if she can just see enough of this purple five to pot it. That's why she's actually brought the jump cue around this side of the table as well. That's because there's a shot clock in operation. Just playing this with a little bit of left spin. She needs to hurry up. She's missed the pot. The cue ball's going to go near the nine. But it's okay, it's come out enough. So this is a chance for Christina to get a two gap lead in this match. SVB is on table two. He's leading six three in that match, so he's broke away a little bit. Right, Phil, we've been speaking about Christina's cue action. I think now's the time for me to count this pause. Take a look at this. One, two, three, 
four, five, five seconds. That's pretty incredible. It's pause for thought. Christina to catch. Looking good here, trying to avenge that defeat in Iowa just a couple of days ago. She leads Kelly Fisher by three racks to one. It's been quite slow going so far. Welcome back to Harrah's Resort in Atlantic City. It's day two of six in the biggest pool tournament on the calendar in terms of prestige and in terms of the competitors involved. 256 when we started out yesterday morning. Slowly but surely, they are falling away. The field getting whittled down until we have two finalists here on Saturday. So far today, we've seen four big names, three big names in pool, Mayuki Oi, Jason Shaw and Dennis Okolo went comfortably on the main match table. A massive name in the world of snooker, Judd Trump also coming through 9-2 a little earlier this evening. This match though, an all-female clash between Christina Takach and Kelly Fisher has got the makings of a marathon and one that could go all the way. Yeah, let's just have a look at this break shot. See how her feet are very square on? That's how she stands when she's playing. And that is what is causing her lack of power. However, it's working out lovely. She's got a shot on this one ball. And this is a real good opportunity 
to really get a healthy lead now. This is the key shot coming up. She needs a nice angle on the blue too after potting this shot now. This is what's going to make this rack a lot easier. It's all about where she can get this cue ball now. That's not bad. She's done a good job. She wasn't too bothered about the distance because she knew it was all about angle. Key shot here is the pace this two ball goes in at the pocket. It was all the pace that Phil, wasn't it? Just shaved that near jaw and refused to drop. I liked it when you were counting, when she was down on the shot, counting the pools. I think you should do that more often, Carl. Maybe you should be auditioning to be the speaking clock. <laughs> well, if there's anybody out there that wants to... Uh... <laughs> I don't think it exists now. <laughs> SVB64. This is a big wrap. Two balls left, pretty much guaranteed. And there it is, so that's going to be 7-4. Kelly had to go rail first, she needs this to bounce, she needs it to bounce. Did it just get there? She's going to be using the rest, it's not really a problem for Kelly, being the next snooker player. Yeah, so Shane Van Boning get two racks away from victory and a meeting in the third round with Moritz Neuhausen from Germany. Yeah, and I tell you what, he practices with Joshua Filler. He is a class, class act. He's only about 18, 19. He's going to be a future world champion, that lad. He might even be 17, Phil. I'll have to just double check. I'm sure you've got that wrote down somewhere, Phil. Stato, that you are. Well, one thing I will say, I was surprised actually that, given that Josh Filler practices with Moritz, that they weren't together for the World Cup of Pool because that would have been one dynamic partnership but you can't really complain because with Christoph Reiches they ended up winning the thing anyway at the expense of two old men from GB well, Appleton and boys well one old man <laughs> yeah it was the two ball that was let Kelly Fisher in in this rack and she's going to win this rack that is why we want a tighter pocket. This exact reason. Kelly Fisher. It's 3 around. 2. And that is a potential turning point. When players miss a, a ball like that, sometimes it costs them dear and they spend an awful lot of time sitting in their chairs thereafter. It was really important for Kelly Fisher to win that rack and to reassert herself in this match now just one rack in it center stage what a wonderful arena and we've had good crowds on both days obviously we start at 10 a.m here in, in america and it's a different type of arena we've got high tables and chairs spread out a little bit yeah and currently going on a lot of matches in the one side, the one loss side of the draw, and a couple of female players are involved in those matches. April Larson now 4-3 up right on Stephen Folan. Jennifer rating. Beretta, Great. well known on this side of the Atlantic. She's 5-1 down to Michael Schneider from Switzerland. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about the arena for a minute. Each segment, there's 33 tables, each segment is actually kind of split up, so you can literally walk anywhere in this arena and get a view of any table, any match, any player you want to watch. There's kind of channels running in and out of the tables, like lanes. So you can get yourself a ticket, come here and watch, well, basically, anybody you want. Kelly's got a spring in a step now. She knows this is a good chance to tie the match up. So we're probably going to play this with a little bit of right hand English just to square this cue ball up. Three ball sat pretty over the middle. Yeah, 
that's fine, that's perfect. What a CV, Kelly Fisher. She won the women's version of the US Open in 2008. Women's World Nine Ball Champion, originally in 2012, and much more recently, a couple of years ago, she's won events like the Amway Cup, the International Tournament of Champions, the China Open, you name it. Her name is probably engraved on some trophy somewhere. Needs this cue ball to keep travelling. Might be a hair short. Don't know if she can draw this cue ball back and play the eight in the bottom left. If she can't, she's going to be stunning the cue ball over. And maybe playing it in the top right. Oh, it's gone wrong. She thought she could have missed the nine. That is unusual because she hit the nine ball half ball. That's quite unusual. When a player feels like they can miss the ball, if anything, they, they hit it thin. She's going to be playing the bank now. Oh, she's trebled it. That is horrible to see. It can happen. Whenever you go for the bank, it can end up trebling into the opposite the side. That is heartbreak for Christina to catch. Isn't it just straightened up that black eight ball? In it went. And now, after Christina to catch had a, an opportunity to perhaps go 4 1 ahead, she missed the two ball. Right now, it's all level. 3-3, just how quickly a match can change, we've seen in the last few moments. Undoubtedly, she's got the greater experience, Kelly Fisher, in a whole variety of Q sports. But she will know that Christina De Catch is more than capable of victory this evening. This is one of those matches you would not like to call, I think you have to say, that... Kelly Fisher is favourite, but only by a slender margin. By the way, a third lady player is currently in action out there. Sakura Maromatsu from Japan, who trails Ryed Shabab from Peace the United States 1-0 over on break, table 13. The US Moscone Cup captain Jeremy Jones in action as well. He's played 2-1-1, lost one. And he's currently 1-1 against Bill Meacham. Again, another positional shot, what she's not quite happy with. Just over stunned that ball. I think the cue ball running towards the six. She needs to at least thin if it is doing. Yeah, that's fine. Then. Well judged. Well, we suspected the missed two ball from Christina to catch early in rack five might be a turning point. That's how it was looking, although the last positional shot from Fisher left an awful lot to be desired. Being so close to the side cushion with the cue ball meant her positional options were somewhat limited, but she should be OK.
Well, she won the opening rack, did Kelly Fisher, when the cue ball found the carpet. After Christina to catch. Kelly Fisher wins the rack. Misjudged the jump shot. After that, to catch looked the better player for a while. But Kelly Fisher is back in front at 4-3. in the town famous for Boardwalk Empire. Someone's tried to be the emperor of the US Open. Be crowned one of the most coveted champions in the world of pool. It's still early days, only day two. Already though, this tournament is taking shape and providing plenty of drama. Currently on the main table, we're looking to see whether Kelly Fisher can kick on. She was 3-1 behind against Christina to catch now 4-3 ahead though. Table two news, Shane Van Boning, he's 8-5 up on Sharik Said. She said fell over on table two. It is 8-5 to SVB, but there's a bit of a safety battle going on over there. So if Sherry can win that rack and it becomes 8-6, that is very interesting. 8-6 in a race to nine at pool. Well, I'm 
not saying it's hill hill but it's got that kind of eight seven ish eight seven and a half feel to it it's very easy for a pool player to rattle off three racks so we'll keep you posted on that well that's what kelly fisher has done here and it looks like being four after that christina to catch mistake no contact made on the one whatsoever yeah she's been a little bit unlucky here christina she was three one up kelly played a poor positional shot and she did flute the eight ball if she doesn't flute the eight ball it'd have been four one to christina so she's been a little bit fortunate yeah very true but remember to catch did miss the two earlier in that rack down the rail it's a fair point phil i forgot about that i'll give you that one no you're right the the treble from Fisher was extremely fortunate. It's all about chances, pool. It can be quite a ruthless game at times. That's why if you do get a chance, you have to take them. And this is why you see Kelly, she's really zoned in. She knows how important this rack is. And this is a tricky shot. Is she gonna try and kill it? No, she's drawing over. This looks good. Well, there you see, Saeeda's at the table. He's got these two balls, and he's pulled it back to 8-6. Kelly's missed the sixth ball. Big chance gone. That's a nice shot from Sharik, so... This nine ball will be 8-6 to shame and of course it's winner breaks more than capable of running three racks say ed say yes he's won the rack van boning not over the line yet he's starting to feel a little hot under the collar yeah, and Christina's just missed a poor shot there. That is big. She knows how big that is. And Kelly Fisher swooping. So 5-3 ahead, basically capitalising on her opponent's well, unusual mistakes. She's normally dependable, reliable and really focused is to catch. And yet here, she's made a couple of errors that are totally uncharacteristic. Just coming across the bottom of your screen, the latest results. A lot of these in the one lost side of the draw, not all. getting to the point now where certainly first thing tomorrow we're going to see a lot of big name matchups Carl you've been to the final of the US Open would you say it's one of the most mentally and physically draining tournaments out there I think you have to would say the Derby City Classic with all of the different divisions would be the one where you get virtually no sleep, but in terms of the importance of this and what it stands for and what's at stake, is it the most mentally draining? I think so back in the day, but I think now uh, we play double elimination to the final 16, I think it feels a little easier, if that makes sense, because when I got to the final, it was double elimination all the way through and you could kind of got real deep in the event and then lose a match and still have to win six or seven to even get near the chance at a final. Now all the players in this event, 256 players, your main goal is to make the final 16. It's almost split the event in two, make the final 16, every match will be played in the arena, race to 11. So I just feel like even if you do go in the loser's bracket, well, you can still have a goal as Kelly Fisher misses a shocker. She's, well, she's just smiling. That's all she can do. Maybe she's a little bit tired. Well, again, one has to say, uncharacteristic. It really 
what a, a terrible error. And that's been the story of the match. Neither player anywhere near optimum form. Christina needs to just roll this in and try and leave the gap in between the red three and the brown seven. And this has gone wrong. Hopefully it's just held up enough so she can pop this two. didn't hear first time that to catch wanted the extension yeah, if she pots this ball she's got to avoid the three balls in a line in the center of the table if she catches one of them it could go wrong and it has gone wrong she's hooked behind the seven Nothing's quite going right at the minute for Christina. Foul shot. And not for the first time she misses a ball completely when kicking. Start the clock, please. And if you do that, you're going to be out of the door very quickly. Now, can Shane Van Boning apply the finishing touch over on table two? He's been pressed harder than most people imagined. You'll be very relieved to get this one under lock and key. Well, it wasn't his best positional shot. I'm not saying it was easy because the cue ball was always running towards the eight. It might have been of trying to just flip the eight, so this is thin. Well, it took a wobble, it took a wobble, and he's landed on what we call the 50-yard line. Kelly's obviously going to put these remaining two balls take a healthy 6-3 lead. SVB's got this tricky nine. We do see these missed. This is for the match, though. Kelly Fisher wins the rank. Kelly Fisher doubling up on Christina to catch at 6-3. Shane Van Boning advances to play. Moritz Neuhausen in the next round. So... S V B A O K eventually. Simultaneous drama there. I'll tell you what though, Christina to catch. She's very competitive, loves her pool, dedicated to the sport. She will be really disappointed, not only with the scoreline, but the way it's been arrived at. She's not shone it all yet. Yeah, things are looking really good. Both players looked a little bit edgy. And Christina looked like she was about to take a good lead and then it didn't happen and from then on Kelly's kicked on and well it's gone it's not gone so great for Christina. So this is important now. Christina you just feel like she needs to win this next rack. Kelly will be breaking. By the way, we were talking about the lack of shocks. One of them was the fact that Wu can Lin Rack number 10. Who won the Kelly Las Fisher Vegas Open a couple of weeks ago was sent to the one loss break. side of the draw. He is trying to make amends. And right now, over on table 32, he's 3 1 up on Kevin West, the man from Chinese Taipei. <laughs> Worked out well that. Ball in, in this case, the five. Open shot on the one. Two. Looking good as well. Can Fisher run and extend the lead? The 
this shot's all about the cue ball now. Even though the pot's quite thin, she should be okay. Cue ball needs to come back over and the kind of path where a bridge hand is on the table off this other side rail. But the cue ball's going to land on the three, so the positional shot has gone wrong. Both players not quite on their A game in this match. Well, you're very kind, aren't you, saying that? I mean, I think for Christina to catch, it's probably her C minus game. For Kelly Fisher, maybe B minus. You're a harsh man, Phil. Trying to get the cue ball in behind the nine. And I think she was also trying to push the three, touching that side rail. And I'm looking down the line of the shot. And this three ball does go. Problem is going to be getting on the pink four. This is the big thing with pool, Phil. Obviously, you worked in snooker many, many years, about 70 years, right? And a lot of the snooker players think judge just going to come over, not miss a ball, and end the story. But it's when you've got these situations is where the game of pool is what it's about. She's elected to leave it long and play a thin shot. Cue ball control here is going to be the most difficult thing. She probably should just try and pop the ball and maybe even just bump the cue ball. She could maybe play with this side, but she might use that brown seven to hold the cue ball. It's important she just pops the ball here. Sometimes you can scratch in the top right. And then it's another ball miss from Christina. She badly needs cover. It would be provided by the seven ball. I think it's one of the similarities between pool and snooker when you're on an outside table. There's less pressure. And right now the pressure of the main arena is getting two to catch who doesn't get to cover behind the seven but but yeah that was a poor shot she could have landed anywhere in the middle of the table to land behind the eight well we need to choke that one down that was a poor mistake that's the jump cue in her hands six ball is quite close to the corner so at the top level the top jump players would make this pot. Got to watch the scraps in the top right. Oh, and she's missed the pot. It's mistake after mistake after mistake. And you're saying, but well, I'm harsh. <laughs> no, it's okay for you to say <laughs> things like that, but I'm just taking a leaf out of your book, Phil. Yeah, and it's just landed a little bit awkward. It could have gone anywhere, and it often does when you're struggling. Uh, I, can, I think she can just pot it, and the natural angle's kind of there, actually. Extension, please. Christina needs a, a catalyst, something to get going. Tidy up here. And then all things might change. Certainly everything isn't lost yet. Just don't hit that side rail from this angle. Can stay up on these 4.25 inch pockets. Ah, uh, hard to the pocket, that's good. So she's going to win a rack quite a long time in this match she was 3-1 up but it's going to be 6-4 and she's still in this match make no mistake about it without signing like the Grinch you know it's not the highest quality match we've seen so far far from it lots of errors from both players but it's building up and it could well be dramatic towards the end. Kelly Fisher's lead trimmed to 6-4.
one more match in this round is to be completed. And it's the one we're watching right now. Kelly Fisher, 6-4 yep. up on Christina to catch, but it was 6-3. Trailing by six racks to four. And of course, with winner breaks, it is to catch to get things underway in rack 11. Yeah, and she's been breaking OK when she's been at the table. She's been having a few shots after the break. OK, well, there's the break, and now it's time to just pop in and hear the thoughts of Shane Van Boning after his tough workout in this round. Shane, two wins in two. Happy? I'm feeling a little shaky on my last match, but um, uh, my opponent made a couple of mistakes, so I took advantage of his mistake. Was that match tougher than you expected? Yeah, a little bit. I, I didn't really feel comfortable today, but uh, i got to regroup for tomorrow. And is that the main thing? You've won your matches, you can just regroup now and just have a, have a break? Yeah, um, you know, I just got to regroup and uh, stay confident and, and uh, do whatever I can do. How much does this trophy, this title, mean to you? I want to win the US Open so bad. Uh, <laughs> do you know what, Shane? It was a pleasure watching all those fans lining up for pictures and autographs. I mean, yeah. you're loved here. Yeah, I mean, I, um, you know, one of the top American players. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's good to see that there's a lot of fans here. So. Does it make you feel good, though, just seeing so many just queuing up just to get a picture of you? Yeah, I mean, I really love the tournament. The uh, US Open has always been the best tournament. Yeah. Shane, have a rest. Congratulations. Thank you. Kelly, your options. Well, Shane Van Benning being very modest there, saying I'm one of the best American players. He's the best American player. Still occupying that status without any shadow of a doubt. Yeah, and he might well be the greatest American player of all time. That's obviously up for debate in people's opinions, but... He's definitely in that talking point. That's a good safety shot. Christina's going to have to kick at this one. There's no jump shot available because jumping over that nine, well, the green six is in the way. So kicking she will do. And it needs to be a good one. She needs to come off the side rail just before the middle pocket. And she ideally needs to hit it full. She needs a little bit of luck here as well. Main thing is hitting the ball at a good pace. Good pace it was. There you see she hit it full. And overall, you've got to be pretty happy with the outcome. Extension, please. With just three seconds left on the clock, I think it's prudent from Fisher to take the extension. These players don't want to do it too early in the rack if they can avoid it, but sometimes it's unavoidable. And I think that was one of those instances where she hadn't made up her mind, she didn't want to rush the shot, and so she opts to take the extra 30 seconds. She's done a pretty good job there. She was just trying to get the cue ball on the bottom rail and hopefully use the nine and the purple five as a blocker. So even though she's not got the hook, well, there's a bit of distance. Big news for the female contingent here. April Larson has beaten Stephen Folan. Extension, please. By nine racks to five. So well done to April. She's undecided what shot to play, isn't she? She's been looking at this one for, for a few seconds. Well, oh, she's gone for the thin cut. She's missed it, and the cue ball needs to hit the six. Well, it did hit the six, but it's still left a pot for Kelly Fisher. It's a thin one. 
No, she can hold the cue ball with left hand English to stay on the two. She will do. If she can't, she might use that brown seven to hold the white ball. This is the problem. She needs to the two. Yeah, she's played that way too hard. Obviously didn't mean to do that. Yeah, needed a, a robust contact, didn't she, with the two. As it was, she just no, grazed off it. it. You're used to it, yeah. Just asking Marcel Eckhart whether she's used her extension. Of course she did. I think that's an indication of just how befuddled you can become. Yeah, there is a TV screen um, at the bottom end of the table, what will tell Kelly, but obviously she might have looked and maybe couldn't see it. So she just asked the ref, that's fine. Again, it is safe, but Christina can see the left side of this too. This is where the creme de la creme of tool players always lock you up in jail. You always play these shots, and when you come to the table, you're hooked. Trying to use the brown seven. And then you see again, there's, is there an edge there? If not, it is an easy kick off the side rail. And it's the type of kick shot a pool player likes because you can send the two down table. And as long as you're at the right hand side of this two, the cue ball will go up towards the top rail. Well, it's not how she's played it, that's for sure. But she's got a little bit fortunate there. Christina wasting no time, gets the short cue out. She's going in her ball. Tell you what, she's wearing out the tip on that jump cue in this match. Played so many shots, countless shots, jumping. It's just been one of their matches. Whenever they've kicked out of a out of a snooker, or there's been a jump shot, both players seem to get in, to be getting away with it. And the two balls landed on that green six, so it doesn't pot. Kelly's got to play another good safety shot. Just electing to leave distance was no real effort of of snookering Christina there. Our pal Jeremy Jones in the commentary box this afternoon. Great to have him back behind the microphone. He's taken a 5-3 lead over Bill Meacham in a match that he needs to win to stay involved. This has gone wrong. I'm not really sure what she was trying to play there. The two ball was always going to go towards that corner. So the containing safety shot from Kelly has paid off. Well, she's played that inch perfect. We've seen so many matches on the TV table being one-sided. This is kind of the first match where it's come close. And you're going to expect this when you, you see the better players matching up. Don't forget, folks, up next is the legend, 60-year-old Earl the Pearl Strickland. He's on next. Now, he's in the loser's section. He lost earlier on to Avika Putnik but it's still a treat whenever Earl screws his cue together and we get to watch him. Well, not happy, but the way the kisses worked out, I'd be. I think on balance, you have to say she's had the better run. Kelly Fisher wins the wreck. And she's now three ahead. At 
It really has been a strange old match. Neither player able to get any kind of sustained rhythm or momentum going. And because of that, even though Fisher is looking good, just a couple of racks away from victory, I would not write off Christina to catch his chances. When it comes to ladies' Euro Tour events, you know, she's second on the all-time list already. She's only 22 years of age, and yet she's won seven Euro Tour events. Only one more player has been more successful than that. Jasmine Auschen, the older sister of Albin Auschen, who impressed many with her performances in the World Nine Ball Championship at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes back in June. And Christina Tukac has also won four you, rack number 12. European titles to a ball to straight tour. So she's crammed an awful lot of winning into those 22 years. And I'm not discounting her chances yet. Although... That was a, a wonderful break for Fisher. The one ball just limping in. More to the point, look where the two finished. Yeah, it kind of didn't matter that the one fell in. Just purposely because of where this two is and just a nice positional shot here. These balls have they broke lovely, haven't they? Just look at where they've landed. This is just keep good control of the cue ball and you should be on the hill. Played the direct shot there, just killed the cue ball. So she's got a nice angle on this purple five in the side. She has under it that a little bit. She wanted to be further down the table. So there's a little bit of angle on this. Cue ball. I think she's going to play it round the angles. There she does. This looks good though if the cue ball bounces. Yeah, that's fine. Good shot. Well, it's now looking really good for Kelly Fisher. One has to say it's looking rather bleak for Christina to catch if she's going to pull this one out of the fire. The Russian has to win the last five racks. That's because Kelly Fisher leads 8-4. A couple of massive events brought to you by Matru Multisports are coming up in the next few months. Next month, in fact, it is the Weather Cup. That great transatlantic tussle of 10-pin bowling. Europe against the reigning cup holders, the USA. And there you see Kyle Troop, who is one great character and one great bowler. Really looking forward to that. It's in Leicester at the Morningside Arena, middle of next month. And then in the world of pool, there is no greater excitement than seeing the renewal of the Moscone Cup. Europe are the holders. And the vice captain is sitting on my right hand side, Carl Boys. The Moscone Cup, like no other event, it's all Thank about pride, passion, and holding your nerve. Kelly Fisher is breaking on the hill. Yeah, leading by eight Big East tournament, Europe v Asia, uh, USA, Asia. Getting carried away there. We don't want to play in Asia. <laughs> and it's at Ali Pali. The crowd will be back. 
Oh, and this is a very useful break from Kelly. Just what you need when you're on the hill. This is a chance to win the match. Yeah, in the early days of the Moscone Cup, of course, the lady player, Cole Fisher, was involved, played for Europe. That was Alison Fisher. And it was a delight to have Alison with us in the commentary for a couple of tournaments earlier this year. Great to see her again. I always say this, Carl, but I'll say it again. What are the chances? Women's World Snooker Champions, Mandy Fisher, Alison Fisher, Kelly Fisher, same surname, all unrelated. Yeah, that is... Well, wow, that's just bizarre, really. I can't imagine that has happened in any other sport around the world. Two ball goes in the heart of the pocket. Now, this is the key shot coming up. Is she going to try and drop in behind this four and play a combination onto the seven? If she does do that, you want to be as close to that pink four and as straight as possible. Or will she draw this back down table? She's played a bump into it, and that, that is pretty good. I think this combination can be made. The hardest part about this shot is making sure you've got a shot after it. Oh, it's worked out nice. It was a lovely angle just to cinch this four over towards the corner pocket and this is looking looking pretty bleak for Christina to catch just these three balls yeah hard to imagine that the Moscovite isn't going to be sent to the one lost side of the draw yeah it was the experience in this match that's told 43 years of age Kelly Fisher, she's going to chalk another victory over a youthful Christina to catch in this all-ladies battle. Kelly Fisher wins the rack. Yeah, and the match. there's no doubt in my mind that Kelly Fisher had the roles there. She was more fortunate than her opponent, but I think that Christina to catch would be the first to agree that she contributed to her own downfall. For me, the turning point was the fifth rack. Tack. 3-1 ahead, missed the two ball. Thereafter, Fisher took control. She wins by nine racks to four.